All right, hello, citizens of the Nigerverse. It's Niger once again, and this is gonna be another wrestling review. So, oh, our last Survivor Series review for the month of November, at least for this year, of course. And um, and uh, let it let it be known that the entire reason for not just the event, but also the tournament in particular that dominates most of the event, is because as Vince McMahon really didn't want Stone Cold Steve Austin to be the champion, at least in kayfabe. I'm talking about Survivor Series 1998. Uh, uh, so, so uh, of course, as always, I'm not professional, not professional uh, wrestling reviewer analyst, just a man who enjoys a good time, which I kind of had with the show. Um, the, the thing is, the show is, at least in terms of it's it's kind of weird. I'm not gonna lie, it's kind of weird. Uh, and I'll explain why in just a moment. Uh, but of course, if you uh, if you've seen these reviews of mine before, you kind of already know how this works. If you haven't, I'm gonna be talking about what I liked and what I disliked about the matches, and I'm gonna go match by match. But the thing is, most of these matches are pretty short. There's there's um, truly 18 of them in total. Total, 15 on the actual, um, or actually 14, I should say, on the actual card itself, like the main pay-per-view feed. Um, but uh, this show and its matches kind of have to be graded on a curve because uh, the Deadly Games tournament takes up most of this show, about, I'd say, 90% of the show. Oh, is devoted to the Deadly Games tournament, and as I mentioned, kind of at the uh, beginning, uh, hang, uh, hang, a lot of controversy happened, at, at least in terms of kayfabe, where uh, Vince McMahon and the corporation uh, have screwed Stone Cold Steve Austin out of the WWF Championship, and so, um, and so now a tournament is being held to declare who is going to be winning uh, the WWF Championship. The WWF Championship is currently vacant, and as they say in commentary, it's been vacant for two months. Could you imagine <laughs> uh, having a vacant championship for two months? It probably wouldn't be too much different from when uh, champions take time off, such as Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar, but still, uh, no WWF Champion for two months. And so that is insane to think about. Um, Oh, but, uh, yeah, so, the tournament is being held, but the thing is, most of these matches is, um, are pretty short. Uh, or literally the longest match, um, A, is the main event, and that one's only about, oh, uh, well, that's a decent size length, about 17 minutes, but, uh, yeah, a lot of the matches are pretty short. Or, uh, and that's, but, the thing is, it's an overall story. He, each piece is interconnected. Well, almost every piece, with the exception of maybe two matches. It's, everything else is kind of in one interconnected web of stories, which is why I say it's kind of weird, because the action itself is nothing to write home about, especially in the uh, tournament matches, but, but, um, but the overall story is why hey, we're here. Her, um, so it is a bit strange, but... But, uh, but you know what? A year after the Montreal screw job, uh, will controversy strike again? Uh, you probably know the answer to that considering I just brought it up. But, but yeah, so without further ado, let's get right into it. So we start off, uh, uh, and actually we have four preliminary matches. Uh, it's a dark match and then three matches that happened on Sunday Night Heat before the show. Uh, back in the day, uh, they used to have Sunday Night Heat uh, before the pay-per-view. Who, uh, kind of similar to like the pre-show that we, or the kickoff show that we know uh, today, hey, uh, which is weird. They don't really do uh, pre-show or kickoff matches anymore, which is kind of interesting, kind of weird. Like, like sometimes they do, such as when they did it at a uh, Crown Jewel between Sami Zayn and JD, Sami Zayn and JD McDonough, but otherwise they don't really do kickoff matches anymore. That, that's kind of interesting uh, and a little weird, admittedly. Granted. The stuff you show have on the pre-show is stuff that you don't really care about, except when it's stuff that really that you should care about, and it's stuff that's really good and should have been on the main show in some instances. But otherwise, it's it's kind of strange. But nevertheless, um, 
we start off with the first match at uh at um so oh uh the tournament brackets are as follows uh those, um, Undertaker and Kane have a bye in the tournament, so they immediately advance to the quarterfinals, and that's kind of the reward for helping out Vince McMahon take out uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, in, um, in which I should probably explain uh, some of the background. So, oh, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and, uh, and, uh, uh, and let me see if I can... I do have the wiki here or, um, for reference. Um, and, uh, so... Uh, so I um, can find the full timeline of everything. And so oh, uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin won the championship at WrestleMania 14 uh, against Shawn Michaels. It was in uh, Shawn Michaels' last match in the company. He, uh, he but of course, it's the corporation slash Vince McMahon been trying to get it off Austin ever since. Considering uh, Vince McMahon wants a corporate champion, and uh, corporate champion doesn't mean a guy who shows up, causes chaos, and drinks beer all day. A hey, uh, oh well, maybe in some corporations, but anyway, <laughs> uh, so hey, so eventually, uh, Austin does lose the uh, the title in a uh, first blood match against Kane at King of the Ring. Um, not the only thing that happened at that King of the Ring, as uh, Kane's brother the Undertaker can attest to. Who uh, who and this was after the Undertaker uh, hailed uh, 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 Austin with a chair. Or, um, or, and that I think, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like that is. Um, it looks like like that is a, if the wiki is to be believed here. Or, uh, th I think that is what begat Undertaker and Kane's kind of alliance, and uh, begatting the Brothers of Destruction. But uh, then, um, and Kane only had it for a day, and then Austin won it back, back in that, and um. And then, uh, and, uh, Austin and Undertaker started feuding. They won the tag team championships, and then, um, and of course they fought at SummerSlam, and, um, aka, you know, SummerSlam 98, aka the highway to hell. Uh, but, oh, but, um, but yeah, hey, during that feud, dude, uh, I'm, I am following the wiki here and kind of paraphrasing. I think that is when Undertaker and Kane truly were in cahoots, and the Brothers of Destruction was truly formed. And, and um, and it turns out they made a deal with McMahon to take the title off of Austin, and um, and and then it led to a triple threat at Breakdown, on um, on uh, on um, so that uh, that uh, they could try to take the title off of Austin, and it was kind of a handicap match because. As Undertaker and Kane were not allowed to pin each other. They could only pin Austin, and that led uh, Austin losing the title because both Undertaker and Kane had um, had pinned him simultaneously. St stay with me here. Just, just stay with me here. I know it's a lot, but stay with me here. So, oh, um, so, oh, uh, oh, uh, oh, uh, the title was vacated after the simultaneous pin, and and then and uh, the. And uh, and uh, McMahon had a ceremony to crown the Undertaker of Kane as a champion, but then Austin pulled up, up, um, up, and and crashed the ceremony. I believe that was the episode where he showed up in the Zamboni and crashed into the ring. Man, Austin has a bad habit of crashing stuff into the ring, or just crashing stuff. Period. But but uh yeah uh, yeah um uh, so. Oh, uh, the title stayed vacant uh, because, uh, as also according to Wiki, uh, McMahon was upset that the brothers didn't protect him. So, oh, oh, uh, they fought. Undertaker and Kane fought for the title at Judgment Day in your house. house and Austin was the special guest referee. He, but, um, but, but, uh, but uh, with stipulation, if Austin didn't raise someone's hand and in victory, Austin would be fired. Austin did not do that. Therefore, he was fired. <laughs> but. But, um, uh, so because the title was still vacant, and, um, the tournament was set up, up the Deadly Game Tournament, and, um, so that's how that came about, and, uh, Austin was also reinstated by Shane McMahon, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, on a, a five-year contract, uh, as well, so, oh, Austin was reinstated, so Austin is in the tournament, but the tournament... I could are uh, hey, uh, continuing our as well. I, I know I was kind of all over the place, but uh, man, what a convoluted story! Like, hey, you forget, like, as great and awesome as the Attitude Era was, 
man, did they overbook some stuff from time to time. Um, and all those, like, title changes and stuff. Uh, granted, WCW, they were no saints at the same time either. Uh, or especially when it came to the year 2000. But, yeah. Uh, uh, it, yeah, what a whining pussy road. So, Undertaker and Kane have a bye in the tournament. And then the next... Um, and then the net hexed uh, bracket is Goldust and Ken Shamrock. Then the Big Boss Man and The Rock. Uh, then Stone Cold Steve Austin and the Big Boss Man. And um, and uh, you might be wondering why uh, Big Boss Man again. And uh, and uh, we will get to that. Uh, but then uh, Steve. But then we had Lore, Steven Regal, and X Pac. Then Jeff Jarrett and Al Snow. And then finally Mankind and. His uh, first opponent, which is about to be revealed, Mankind starts off the show. Missing Man uh, personally announces Mankind's first opponent, that being Dwayne Gill. Uh, uh, <laughs> and it was funny because Vince Man set up like, oh, this guy accomplished all these accolades. He was in WWE uh, in 1990. Then he left for WCW. Actually, Dwayne Gill. Um, there is a little bit of truth to that. Uh, he did wrestle in 91, but eh, who am I? It's a split hairs. But, but, um, but he, and then he did, uh, I think, do like a match or two in WCW uh, as a jobber. But now he's back. Dwayne Gill. He'll, uh, was taking on mankind in in uh, the first round on here and and kind of a warm up opponent and uh, the story they're trying to paint is that the fix is in and that mankind is going to be the corporate champion that uh, Vince McMahon and company want and of course Gil, uh, Dwayne Gill would then go on to become Gilberg you know the parody of Goldberg uh, so but yeah so mankind defeats him pretty easily in about thirty seconds. Um, to advance in the tournament, so the fix is seemingly in uh, for her, uh, for mankind and uh, to rise up and become the corporate champion. But then next up, uh, Al Snow also advances when he defeats Jeff Jarrett, and and, uh, and the finish for that this one was also kind of interesting with uh, with uh, Jeff with uh, Jarrett reaching for head, uh, which which um, does sound pretty bad out of context, but uh, it's the mannequin head that Al Snow had, you know, the one that caused the controversy with that one toy. But but, um, but then Al Snow grabs Jeff Jarrett's guitar, or, uh, or, uh, and then ultimately he, uh, he Al Snow misses. Jarrett nails him with head, but then Al Snow gets head back and nails Jeff Jarrett in, in order to pick up the win. So Al Snow advances. Then Stone Cold Steve Austin, uh, defeats Big Boss Man, and uh, by disqualification, Big Boss Man gets himself disqualified after he nails and then assaults Steve Austin with his nightstick. So Steve Austin does advance, but will he be in, um, <clears throat> will he be he good to go and compete? And oh my goodness, I forgot to mention the dark matches. Uh, here's, uh, so really quick, uh, the one dark match they had was, uh, too much, uh, which that being Scott Taylor and Brian Christopher, who would then become too cool, who and become Scotty Too Hotty and Grandmaster Sex A, uh, respectively, uh, defeating the Hardy Boys, Matt and Jeff. Yes, too cool defeated hit the Hardy Boys at one point. I mean, crazy to think about. And then uh, the Job Squad of Bob Holly and Scorpio, which it is that too cold Scorpio? Yes, it is. Um, is uh, is they defeated the Legion of Doom, that being Animal and Draws. As, and the Job Squad defeated the Legion of Doom. Um, wow, <laughs> this really is a weird show. But it's not like Animal and Hawk. And I believe this was during that uh, one storyline they had Hawk in. Uh, that one very controversial storyline uh, taking advantage of his real life uh, substance abuse issues. I believe this was during the midst of that. Moving on, uh, then uh, Val Venus defeated Tyler, Tiger Alley Singh, and then Gang Hangrel. Oh, um, defeated Steve Blackman. Uh, but back to this tournament. So, oh, uh, Austin, they're wondering, will he be able to compete? He was hurt really bad by the nightstick. Uh, so will Steve Austin be able to compete? Um, he, but then next up, uh, uh, Lord Steve Regal and X-Pac fight, a, and it leads to a double countout. Uh, oh, uh, oh, um. Uh, the, it's like like the stuff not involving the corporation kind of for the most part feels like real matches 
that you would find on like Raw or something. <laughs> Not really pay per view quality, unfortunately. But uh, Steam Regal and Xbox like uh, did pre pre did pretty decently for the most part. But uh, yeah, so because uh, Steam Regal and Xbox uh, fought to a double countout, uh, that means Stone Cold Steve Austin gets a buy uh, in the tournament, which Vince McMahon is not happy about. Uh, 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 you see him complaining, upset that uh, that uh, Steve Austin essentially gets a buy. Uh, yeah, in the tournament, and I know I am kind of going through these matches very quickly, but that's because there's not really a whole lot to talk about with them. A lot of them are pretty short and kind of just seem to further the story yeah, throughout the match. But uh, there is some, um, there is some moments of, uh, of, of at, not just storytelling, but also some. Uh, not not bad moments. Like I said, uh, Stephen Regal and Xbox having like a, a decent match, not really pay per view quality. Al Snow and Jeff Jarrett had kind of a, eh, an okay match, just no, also not pay per view quality. So I like, will go through them pretty quickly, but I am also uh, going to be uh, describing some of the peripherals uh, surrounding the match. Uh, but then next up, uh, Ken Shamrock battled Goldust and beat him by submission. And uh, this is uh, Ken Shamrock when he was the world's most dangerous man. And, and uh, so Ken Shamrock advanced in the tournament, and then The Rock battled the Big Boss Man. And so, oh, how did the Big Boss Man come back up? Up. Uh, so The Rock, uh, um, uh, The Rock, which uh, The Rock is another person that Vince McMahon apparently doesn't want to win. And uh, and of course, The Rock is the People's Champion, and Vince McMahon has turned his back on the people. So The Rock. Cannot win. He doesn't want The Rock to win, uh, and so, oh, uh, oh, uh, instead, Vince McMahon and sends. Uh, well, originally it's going to be Rock, The Rock versus Triple H, but then uh, it's revealed by the Stooges, that being Gerald Briscoe and Pat Patterson, that uh, instead The Rock will battle the Big Boss Man, which feels like kind of cheating considering Big Boss Man was already eliminated. It, but you know what? In that whole time, I'm I he was going about explaining what happened leading up to it. The match was pretty much over. The Rock rolls up the Big Boss Man and beats him in about four seconds. The wiki here is saying three. They said four on commentary. He, either way, he super quick. The Rock just rolled up, up uh, the Big Boss Man and uh, quickly eats a pin at him or something. Uh, uh, or um, yeah, uh, rolled him up uh, pretty quickly. He to pin him and. Um, and um, uh, I wonder if he was hanging out with Jeff Hardy that day. If you get that reference. But yeah, so oh, uh, The Rock uh, beats Big Boss Man in about three seconds. So now Big Boss Man is truly out by this point, and uh, at least from the tournaments. But he will he will appear later on. Uh, then ne and uh, next uh, up was uh, uh, the Undertaker battling Kane in the next quarterfinal. Well, uh, in the next, uh, this is in the quarterfinals because remember the Undertaker and Kane had a bye, uh, and the Undertaker ultimately puts away Kane there uh, with Paul Bearer, that uh, who's accompanying the Undertaker, or uh, holding on to Kane's foot. And so, uh, Undertaker, so uh, Kane no longer associated with uh, Paul Bearer, or, and um, <clears throat> and uh, and uh, so Undertaker beats him there, or, uh and then uh, Mankind uh, defeats Al Snow. Oh, and then The Rock uh, um, battles Ken Shamrock. Uh, um, uh, uh, it's also worth mentioning in the Mankind Al Snow match that uh, Mankind finds uh, Mr. Sacco, who did go missing, but is wrapped around uh, Al Snow's was, uh, head mannequin doll as a kind of headband. And, and turns out it was planted there by, uh, Vince, uh, by uh, Mr. McMahon. Uh, so. Mankind finds the sock and then uh, puts away Al Snow with the minimal claw and now that he has Mr. Sacco back. Uh, and then with The Rock and Ken Shamrock, uh, uh, not the last encounter that The Rock and Ken Shamrock would have against each other, but uh, um, but also oh, uh, worth mentioning in this match that towards the end, the big boss man, and uh, who's supposed to be getting rid of The Rock, uh, throws the nightstick into the ring while he has the referee distracted. It meant... Um, to uh, meant to throw it to Ken Shamrock, at least in K Babe, but instead the Rock yoinks it out of the air, nails Ken Shamrock with it in order to win. And man, that is is props to the Rock for making that catch. I are like 
Hey, and this is one of the reasons why I know I will never be a wrestler. I, I've talked about it before, but this is why I know I wouldn't be a wrestler. Or sadly, my uh, coordination isn't always the best. I definitely would have ruined that spot. <laughs> like they would, they would have been upset at me. I definitely, I, I already know I would have dropped it. But the Rock, he caught it and he used it. So uh, props to the Rock uh, for using it there. So the Rock advances uh, in the quarterfinals. Then uh, for the WWF Women's Championship, uh, Sable battles uh, Jacqueline. Uh, Jacqueline is the champion going in, and she's defending against Sable. Well, uh, Mark Merrow, who is Sable's husband, and I believe is still married to her at the time, um, but he's turned on Sable and aligned himself with Jacqueline. And so, oh, um, so Sable essentially, he, um, and Sable essentially has to fight the odds because Mark Merrow. Arrow uh, running interference and stuff. Sable ultimately does put away Jacqueline uh, to win in the women's championship here. So, uh, congrats to Sable. Well, I, I guess, because sadly, this was the era where women's uh, wrestling wasn't nearly as big as it is now. Oh, uh, oh but uh, yeah, kind of, a, oh, kind of an AM match, about, about three minutes and over relatively quickly. But then, and uh, in the semifinals, was uh, the uh, Mankind battle Stone Cold Steve Austin. And now, oh, if I am not mistaken, I'm uh, gonna try to see if I can find um, if I can find I mean, the exact um, the exact story behind it. It uh, it uh, the Big Boss Man. And uh, I think this. I think. I think this is. Uh, the match where the big boss man missed his cue. Uh, so, big boss man uh, missed his cue was supposed to be out there or to, um, uh, to help out the finish, uh, but unfortunately he was uh, get, he was discussing a finish for or a later match coming up, and so oh, uh, and so sadly wasn't out there. Kind of a miscommunication. And uh, I, th I think it was this match, and they had to conjure a new finish up on the fly. Okay, so if that is the case, let's see what they came up with. Uh, uh, so, oh, um, so oh, uh, mankind and Austin battling each other. Or Austin a little worse for wear after or the devastating assault from the night night stick. Uh, it, uh, but still battling back against mankind beats mankind out of his tuxedo. Mankind actually uh, up until well, um, up until this and then like the main event uh, and. Uh, through I think like halfway in this, uh, he is wrestling in a tuxedo because he's trying to impress uh, uh, Mystery Man. Uh, he has you know the full tux and everything, the full suits. I could not imagine wrestling in a suit. Granted, it was probably it was probably like a breakaway suit, but uh, yeah, I uh, if he did have to wrestle in an actual suit, I do not envy Mick Foley at all. Granted, that's not the only thing I don't envy Mick Foley when it comes to, but yeah, I, I don't think I could pull it off. But uh, uh, yeah, so Austin literally beats uh, Mankind out of his suit. Uh, Mankind still has the bow tie on, and we actually um, we actually do get uh, the shirt and then the brown pants uh, from Mankind's other attire, uh, the white shirt and brown pants, which is pretty much what Mankind's attire would evolve to become. Um, anyway, hey, and probably the most iconic Mankind attire, aside from, um, as well as, you know, the original, like, brown, uh, brown, um, brown attire as well, but then this one is really iconic, but nevertheless, I uh, kind of get sidetracked, but, uh, yeah, so, Austin's beating him, him, and then, at one point, Austin does have him beat, he, uh, more corporate chicanery, he's a corporation trying to insert themselves, making sure Mankind walks out victorious, and then Shane McMahon, who is a, um, who is a referee at this point in time, and, like, like a real referee, in fact, he ref the, uh, uh, say Abel Jacqueline match, um, but uh, he shows up, he counts the one, he counts the two, he doesn't count the three, he, Austin uh, looks miffed, and, and Shane uh, throws up the double deuce, uh, so oh, Austin essentially goes after him, him and then uh, Mankind takes advantage, and, and, uh, and gets the win there, so, oh, um, 
Oh, Mankind advances, Austin gets screwed out of it. And uh, once the corporation screws Austin out of uh, the championship and the tournament, they hightail it out of there. <laughs> they they haul ass out of there. And Austin is fast in pursuit. Uh, they get in their limo. They speed off. Austin uh, commandeers a guy's truck and uh, speeds off, off after them. So Austin is chasing them down. <laughs> um, and meanwhile, Mankind does advance the tournament. And, but then next up in the next uh, semifinal tournament match, uh, The Rock goes up against The Undertaker. Or so, oh, um, oh, uh, Bossman uh, does come out, tries to run interference, and is ultimately fought off. But uh, The Undertaker is defeated after Kane shows up and, and Dex The Rock gets his brother disqualified. And so they brawl and they speculate on commentary. They're like, "Are they back together? Are 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 they back together? Are they back in cahoots?" Nope, because they they brawl and everything. So they're like, "Oh, they're not back together." Or Kane just screwed uh, his brother out of out of the title. Well, uh, a lot of screw, a lot of screw job and screwing chicanery going on, and we're not even done yet. Uh, and um, but uh, uh, yeah, so oh, it's gonna be mankind and the Rock in the finals. Well, but then, meanwhile, for the WF Tag Team Championships, uh, the New Age Outlaws defend against Steeler Brown and Mark Henry and the Headbangers, uh, Ma Mosh and Thrasher. A couple things of note, uh, for starters, they mention the Outlaw Rule. The Outlaw Rule is in effect. Like, so basically, you may have heard of the Outlaw Rule. You may be wondering, uh, I've heard of the Outlaw Rule, but I don't really know what it is. Basically, during a tag match, I forget exactly when, but during a tag match, match um, the New Age Outlaws retained their titles after Billy Gunn tagged in, and uh, so he and Road Dog were the legal man at the same time, and, and Road Dog laid down, and Billy Gunn pinned him in order to uh, hightail off and still retain the titles. Or it might have been the other way around, Road Dog pinning Billy Gunn. But uh, yeah, so that was be that's what begat the Outlaw Rule, which it is. Which is admittedly kind of funny in hindsight. I like, I like you win a match just by pinning your own tag team partner, right? And and it's it's not, and obviously it's not a bad thing because they they kept the titles. But yes, the outlaw rules in effect. Like, but the other thing is the music that D'Lo Brown and Mark Henry come out to would later be repurposed for The Rock. Uh, so The Rock does have have his theme in, uh, here. It's not quite the uh, the um, one that debuted in. I think 99 or 2000, like the iconic one, the one everybody loves, but, but um, kind of an earlier version of it. Um, but uh, but uh, but the other one that Dilo Brown and Mark Henry come out to would later be repurposed for The Rock, and I believe Rock started using it once he became like the corporate champion and everything. Uh, so Rock began using that. So I guess uh, they're a uh, theme song. Uh, but yeah, so oh, all three teams did okay for the most part. Or, uh, or, uh, the Outlaws ultimately retained. The Outlaws made good on the promise. They promised going into the match that they would walk in and walk out uh, the tag team champions. And that is exactly what they did, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, so the Outlaws was retained in kind of an okay match. But now for your main event and uh, the finals of the Deadly Game Tournament. Who will be the new WWF champion? Uh, will it be The Rock or will it be the corporate champion, Mankind? And so, oh, uh, oh, um, <coughs> so, oh, uh, oh, uh, the fix has seemingly been in for Mankind uh, and, and The Rock has, er has been fighting and earning his way ultimately to this uh, moment and in order to um, in order to uh, get this moment and win the WF championship if, um, if so who will walk up victorious let's find out so the rock and mankind uh, obviously not as crazy as some of their other matches would be later on in their careers and in the rivalry with one another her uh, but her but uh, some decent that's uh, I should say some decent action including mankind uh, Almost cross buying the rock on the announce table, oh, and this is back when the tables were a lot closer to the ring. Uh, but instead, mankind takes himself out, and I believe that's what breaks the Spanish announce table. Well, um, also oh, they're they're battling uh, Vince McMahon and the rest of the corporation. 
do uh, come back out. Uh, they do send Bossman home for the night. Uh, hey, uh, they tell him, job well done. We're, we'll, we're back. We'll take it from here. They actually do that before this match. Uh, but but uh, the corporation does come out uh, uh, to watch the match and to hand uh, Mankind the victory. Or do they? Because uh, after her... Uh, her um, after her, uh, the Rock uh, is in the Mandible Claw, he, they, he passes out, uh, uh, but they do, you know, the arm race spot, and the Rock recovers on three and gets out of it, it, it and then uh, takes uh, out, um, <coughs> out, out um, Mankind with the Rock bottom, but then, and, uh, and um, the Rock pops up, looks at McMahon, Gives gives the eyebrow and then locks in the sharpshooter on mankind and Vince McMahon rings the bell. Though hell, mankind wasn't uh, the corporate champion after all. He was just a fall guy, the decoy. Wait, the Rock is the true corporate champion. He is sold out to the comp to the um to the uh, corporation and um, he's the corporate champion. It's Montreal all over again <laughs> and uh, and it's crazy how just a year later or um, a year after this big controversy in Montreal oh, with the Montreal screw job. If you haven't already, uh, go check out the review I did of uh, Michaels versus uh, Bret Hart at uh, Survivor Series 97 aka the Montreal screw job. I dropped that on a Monday so uh, go check that out. Uh, um, but and t technically yesterday because I am recording this on Tuesday night. But but um, but yeah. So well, it's crazy how a year later they do the exact thing all over again. And like hey, they 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 knew they knew they brought a lot of eyes to them. So it gets rehashed. Not the last time that the Montreal screw job or something adjacent to it would be revisited in WWE history. He, WWE does have a bad habit of, if they did something before, they're going to do it again. Like, they're going to redo it. Even if the people absolutely do not want to see it. But, but uh, they did it. it and, it do, and it does pay off because, as, uh, on one hand, The Rock does win the WWF Championship, which is nice. Uh, is, um, uh, Mankind begins his face turn. It's kind of like a double turn. Uh, even though Mankind is technically healed, he is having some, like, face tendencies, such as his, like, um, well-meaning, for the most part, kind of dim-witted nature, or, um, or, uh, for, or, uh, M Mankind slash Mick Foley, he, um, he kind of like that, uh, dim-witted, not too bright, but, like, kind of well-meaning, uh, naive, uh, I, I think is the word I'm looking for, uh, naive, almost childlike behavior or um so he's kind of leaning towards face anyway and then the rock just fully fully does a 180 fully turns heel well uh also kind of a double turn in that regard or, uh, the rock is the corporate champion and um and it does begin the legendary robbery he turned friendship of uh mankind and the rock uh, and uh and uh, although the Mon the Montreal screw job revisiting is kind of lazy, it does kind of um, it almost does kind of make sense in a storyline point of view with the Rock turning his back on the people becoming corporate champion. Plus, it does kind of give you those like oh moments, kind of those the breadcrumbs approach moment, and uh, and uh, possibly he uh, either happy accidents of the Rock making it this far or the corporation purposely doing stuff in The Rock's favor, or perhaps abs, uh, accidentally, unintentionally, slash intentionally doing things in The Rock's favor or uh, to help him advance. It can kind of be inferred that, that like, uh, like a boss man throwing through it to The Rock on purpose so he could advance so that the plan could be laid out. Gr granted, that's, you know, that's what they did in real life. Uh, hey, but I mean in kayfabe as well. Like, hey, it could be inferred that, like, a hey, um... Or, or a boss man just uh, laid down and let the rock roll him up to get the quick win, and uh, so th oh, that kind of inference can be he, um, can be he, uh, drawn. Uh, but then afterwards, uh, the corporation gives a speech each uh, each that um, that the rock is the corporate champion, and and um, and 
uh, you know that um, that the people screwed the people, oh, and uh, that he doesn't want mankind. He doesn't want gullible dumb mankind. Mankind is confused. Sla mankind slash like Mick Foley, but uh, uh, mankind is confused. Like, hey, uh, how how did you win the match? I I didn't tap. <laughs> kind of playing into that you know gullible childlike naive nature. And then uh, Vince says you don't get it. It um, and then The Rock does attack him, and but Stone Cold does show back up, chases off the corporation to send you know the fans home happy honestly um maybe this is just me they probably should have cut that le that later part out like the whole speech and everything afterwards like like um uh, like raw uh was happening the next night this was, this was sunday and then raw was gonna happen the next night on monday i think they should have saved it for then because it's like it should have been the turn turn uh, and then, and people leave on, like, they'll, they'll leave with a lot of questions, but that's what you want, like, people asking questions, people wondering, like, whoa, The Rock sold out? That's crazy, like, generating that buzz and everything, uh, versus it's then having the speech, and then, and then, that's uh, really, it, all it really does is just kind of, like, nail it home that this is really happening, but, uh, just leave the moment as is, and then, like, and then, like, everything else that happened, probably, you probably could have did on, like, Raw, including, you know, Stone Cold chasing them off, like, it does send the fans home happy, and I think that's ultimately why they did it, but it's, I don't know. Oh, maybe I'm being too harsh on it, but uh, yeah. So that was uh, Survivor Series 1998, and uh, as they say, the rest is history. He's the Rock comes corporate champion. He gets his feud with Mankind. He eventually faces Stone Cold at WrestleMania 15. In and and yeah, but that's how it began, and and that was Survivor Series 1998. Now you may be wondering, Nigel, why did you review the whole show? Why didn't you? Just review like a sh uh, match or two from the show, like with other Survivor series. Uh, the thing is, I thought about that at first. Like, I thought about reviewing, excuse me, just Rock versus Mankind, and uh, it's it's only really the, uh, it's really <laughs> the match with probably the most amount of storytelling because as everything leading up to it kind of. Um, kind of culminates in that, but but um, but there's also because it runs through the whole tournament, it would kind of be weird without the context of the rest of the tournament. So I'd probably have to watch, I probably have have to watch the rest of the tournament anyway in order to get the full context. So I decided to just uh, watch the full show uh, for that added context and then just review it from there. But uh, yeah, that is uh, Survivor Series 1998. Uh, if I had to pick the strongest and weakest match of the night. The strongest would probably be the main event by default, uh, because it has the most amount of action and it culminates the story. Uh, if I had to pick the weakest, probably everything else, honestly. Like, I, it does, uh, with the exception of a couple matches, it does serve towards the overall story, but I can understand why people maybe don't like this Survivor Series, because it's not really what you consider a, it's very much a narrative pay-per-view. They use it to tell a story, like an overall story throughout. It's essentially, if you look at it, it's essentially chapters uh, to the overall story, instead of each match being its own story. Um, they didn't really do that with this one. I think that's what rubs a lot of people the wrong way. Hey, um, is that at, uh, you have this overall narrative for uh, the night, uh, the Deadly Games tournament. Uh, who's going to be the corporate champion? And uh, is Mankind the corporate champion? No, it turns out it's The Raga, another screw job, uptight thing. Austin gets screwed out of the title. Well, The Undertaker and Kane are in cahoots. It's all part of the same overall story he uh he um so in that regard i think it pays off but it's there her, like essentially the match quality is sacrificed for the sake of the story he, uh does it pay off in the long run is it worth it is it justified i'd say kind of like a um like they tell the story they're able to tell the story and they're able to lay it out, flush it out, and um, pretty much uh, lay it out the way they're supposed to, but like, but in terms of the actual matches themselves, not a whole lot of meat on the bones, unfortunately. He, uh, he, uh, it's essentially, he, um, essentially not something that's supposed to be looked at as just one 
uh, match that you kind of have to look at the whole thing. It's not like one match you can really look at in a bubble because it's like, oh, like just from a match quality perspective, the pay per view isn't really that interesting. But the overall story is really what elevates it. Now, do you see why I say this is kind of weird? Uh, but nevertheless, that's going to do it for this review. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you did, please do me a favor like, comment, subscribe, share it with your friends, turn post notifications so you know every time I upload a video so you can see as soon as it drops. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts on uh, this pay per view event and, and, um, <laughs> And uh, my review of it. Did you like just like this uh, event? Did you like like my review of this event? And let me know. And uh, do you think that um, that pay per views who's being devoted to just a tournament or an overall story like this one are a bad thing? In me, I'd say not really. But when the matches is are not really that interesting, especially because you can tell that oh they're kind of strapped for time, and you know like 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 okay. Hey, we have, we have, um, uh, 14 matches in total. Well, technically 18 with the rest of the Dark Show stuff, but, alright, we've got 14 matches in total, alright. Oh, and we only have about, oh, uh, two uh, hours or so. The, oh, almost three hours. Uh, this is about two hours, 44 minutes, but I imagine with, like, commercial stuff, three hours. Like, okay, we only have three hours to do this. Okay, we gotta go. We gotta go, 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 go. We, we, we don't have time for a lot of fluff in the matches. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta make them quick. We gotta make them quick. Come on, come on, let's go. Oh, so, oh, kind of, kind of a rushing feeling, but it does serve the overall story, so I guess, um, it wins points in terms of that, but, uh, nevertheless, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you guys later. Peace. Oh, uh, actually, real quick, before I go, uh, oh, I uh, just want to remind you guys, uh, my review of, uh, AEW Full Gear is going to be coming this week. In fact, it's going to be coming on Friday. I'm going to watch the event on Thursday and then, uh, review it and then have that review up by Friday. So, oh, um... <laughs> So no, I'm sure quite a few of you guys have been waiting for that, but don't worry, that is going to be coming on Friday. But yeah, uh, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys later. Peace.